Yeah, basically just to both of you, a big thank you. I'm a super geeky fan of these kind of things that you were both presenting, but especially to Giga, I want to reassure you that you're not alone in this. There, I know at least two other groups that I can hook you up with. Uh, Votewatch that does this on a European level, and they have gone through a lot of the questions that you were asking yourself of to which extent we promote certain things, to which extent we are objective, to which extent we go into content. Um, but even more interesting for you might be, uh, I met up two weeks ago actually with a group of geeks like you yourselves, just students in Catalonia who wanted to do it for the Catalan Parliament, uh, and they're going to call it My Parliament, El Teo Parlament. And um, I will put you in touch with them so you can discuss in parallel about these kind of processes because, you know, somebody who is in that will know better. Uh, we can only give you feedback from a user's perspective here, but in terms of also having that perspective of someone who is developing it free of money, not that really having money, just having great ideas like you, and uh, I think that's, that's excellent. So really, I like, especially from my side, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily add anything to what you do. But I already see in comparing to those two that I know that you are adding new elements which is very um, friendly towards the media for making this kind of taking the frame and putting it on there. It's much better than what the others have. But a suggestion that also the Catalans can tell you is to check if you have a certain cooperation with the parliament itself in terms of securing this data so that it's not something that the parliament perceives you're working against them but that you actually have a cooperation, an official cooperation with the parliament that uh, this is possible because that's what they did and the parliament, the Catalan parliament at least, was very interested in engaging. Uh, so maybe that's, the, those are just points for you for, for reflection. And Marco's work is just so excellent and way beyond my scope of understanding that I'm not gonna <laughs> go into that. But maybe just a question, yes. Um, Marco, you said that you could use those tools for civil society. So if you now that you've been listening, for example, in the previous session, you've heard about the different protest movements that are going on, and how would you apply some of the work that you've been doing to their work? How would you suggest to embed or make digital activism part of their uh, their activism, apart from like what was happening in Slovenia, that you know Facebook was a tool where people gathered and shared information of where they're going to meet next? Is there an element that could be helpful in the protest movements to link it better with digital activism? So, thank you. Uh, great presentation. Um, you know, I, I don't make nice tools. I just okay. make tools. He makes nice tools. Well, when you start Digging into uh, databases, and you know, you start making new pictures and new understanding of, of the data. Uh, uh, the problem usually uh, comes, you know, how how to use it uh, actually, or which particular s snippets of data we should use in order to make a conclusion, and if this conclusion will be actually useful in the end. And I would say it's a mostly creative process. It's not a crafting process where you have you just put some databases and then you calculate stuff. You have to figure it out on, on your own. I have you know these moments of you know something happens and then I get an idea. Uh, well I want this data combined with this in order to uh, get this conclusion but it's mostly creative thing. Some people can do creative things, some people don't. I I occasionally do something which appears to be creative, so it's very hard. And if, if you talk about uh, predictive analytics, you know, the, you know the, the really cutting edge stuff, I was, think, I was doing a similar presentation in Rome for a World Bank and uh, EU Commission about how to use these tools in, in civic space. And I had a really tough time thinking about, you know, how could we use it. I mean, it's so obvious on how to use this information in a shop or uh, how to use this information to predict uh, uh, traffic patterns and, you know, in a, in a very commercial sense, how to predict defaults on loans and 
uh, fraudulent activity in insurance companies, you know. But these are all all known cases. The the thing is that you have to understand the problem and compare it with you know whatever tools you have av available. If uh, if that makes sense. I mean, I am still trying to digest and form. I I have this huge feeling that. I'm on a, you know, on the edge of something unbelievably big, but I'm not there yet. I'm simply spending a lot of time, I mean, huge amounts of time, uh, uh, to study it and to try to figure out uh, what's next. And I believe that there is something really, really interesting there. So, so, so sorry, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me too, <laughs> but. I believe there is a huge potential. Then if you just allow me a sub-question, which is more in terms of you publish something, you launch something out there, uh, and then there are consequences to that. Yeah, um, usually. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> However, it, it also kind of creates consequences for the people that might already be in that field. For example, in terms of transparency, you will have activists who are doing transparency work, and then you come with something new that can be great, but if you don't kind of match that with those, with the people in the field who are doing transparency, um, then they might not be able to analyze that data or use it in a proper way. So it's just out there, yeah. and the media yeah. will pick it up yeah. and misinterpret it. No, no, no. It. So, so, in general, you know, if you are talking about publishing things, so I like to publish things, that's <laughs> obvious. Uh, the idea is not to take the data and publish it is a, as a phone book because that doesn't make any sense. You know, all, most of this information is available in some form or the other somewhere, or you have to just connect it. The idea is to collect the data, clean it, to create a story out of it. Because the media, I, I always work with the media, so we are basically creating a very simple website, which is not really nice. It's not designed to be used every day. It's just designed to be very colorful, you know, and the reason why we are making it with these strange colors is because when you are having a, they are, they are doing a short interview with you for a, uh, evening news, and they will uh, try to have your monitor in the background, and you really want to have screaming colors on, you know, something shiny is happening, and that's the reason why we are making it that way. So, you have to have the data, you have to provide a story and you have to provide a basic context. So I would say we make things up to 75% and we leave the, the rest to the media and to everyone else who is interested. I'm not the one who will go on every door in Croatia and count people living there or I'm not the one who will make judgment if that particular public procurement contract was right or wrong. I'm just going to provide you tools and you can make your own conclusion. If this horse farm can actually build a, a power line for a creation utility company, you know, th that was actually the case. So we had a horse farm building power lines. Okay, well, yeah. Uh, just a short comment on everything. Uh, my mind was positively blown by all the projects in here in the past two hours. And a simple statement about your worries that you might be called neoliberal. In my opinion, unless with such a project, you get called, called both neoliberal and communist, you're not being objective. And since you said that you are not there to judge, but just to present everything, uh, you should be prepared to expect to be called both. So just take it and be proud of it. But really great work, both of you. Kudos. Is there, uh, since you're from the Pirates, is there something you want to add? Like uh, any kind of similar ideas that you have? I think you have been saying something yeah. that's really doing. Do you want to mention it? I can. Or something else? There's interest, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm from the Pirate Party of Slovenia. Uh, as my colleague has said, they have done some amazing work. We're an internet party, originally from all around Europe, and we've done quite a few projects, but mostly we've just been running elections for 
people as well, because we had two elections, one after the other. And the thing we did was, well, we did our entire election online. So social media, stuff like that. And now we're, now we're evolving. Now we're trying new, new projects. The projects, like the one they're doing right now, that we're trying to do is, we found all the information about the people lobbying our government. This information is usually filled out on paper by the people being lobbied. It's <coughs> scanned into a PDF. It's then uh, put into a RAR archive every year, and it's published very long, down, long, long way down on a page on the Commission for Prevention of Corruption. It's basically hidden. It's hidden very well, and it's not really well usable. And it's also there's also a disclaimer that any illegal lobbying is not reported. And they do not guarantee that all lobbying is being reported. But still, from that kind of information, you can see quite a bit of patterns. Uh, and what we're doing is actually starting to index and uh, take all this information and put it in a computer, uh, in a database, basically. And then just map it down to laws. So, law was passed, who was lobbying it? And you can see interesting patterns. One interesting pattern I always like to mention is how much our um, what's handy rows now? Uh, beekeepers, yeah. Beekeepers were lobbying our government for subsidies. So much so that we now have way too many beehives in Slovenia. Uh, and this is our first step, to create a very simple application to show this kind of information. And our second step is to try and lobby the Commission for Range of, of uh, Corruption to enter this information live. So every time they get a report, they enter it live so that you can see who's lobbying the government. And these kind of projects are the projects of open data that I think are very important because to us, transparency is one of the main issues that we have to battle and the main issues that can make our democracy and our countries better and the politics and all the problems we see should get better through many things, but transparency is one of them. So, that will be it. Oh, and uh, congratulations to both of you. Amazing projects. Okay, thanks. Someone else? Okay, uh -huh. yeah. Thanks. Uh, I have a few uh, ideas, just comments about the Parlometer project, right? Uh, first of all, uh, I think that the word map, the way you thought of it, is a brilliant idea. It's basically putting all the debates in the parliament in a pot and boiling it and letting the everyday bullshit evaporate. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see what's left in the pot. And I would not be surprised if it is avocado, actually. Because <laughs> they are all the same and they all say nothing uh, most of the time. So I think the way you thought of what to highlight with that, I think that's going to uh, produce some brilliant uh, results. The other thing I really liked was the part of the project on which you will rely on uh, students from uh, political science students. Uh, I know that in, in, you know, we monitor what's going on in the parliament and it's really, really difficult. And to have uh, information boiled down about a specific act, I think that's something that uh, NGOs will use, I think that's something the media will use, and uh, I, even uh, citizen, citizens might get more engaged uh, through it. And we have also been speaking in different groups about that we sort of have to have some uh, cross-cutting uh, goals and start uh, joining our efforts and having this short information on what the government does or is getting uh, what in the parliament is one of the preconditions to build these coalitions, uh, being more informed. Uh, and the third comment is, uh, I noticed uh, the thing uh, you have, uh, uh, what is the difference between members of a single party in their voting records and what are their enemies and uh, allies in, in, within the party and outside of the party. Uh, in Croatia, uh, that wouldn't be a useful tool at all because we have such a strong uh, party discipline. So everybody votes the way the president says. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the case uh, in Slovenia, but if it is, 
you might want to think about not placing so much effort on it or maybe you know putting your energy into uh, something else because at the end it might end up that you know everybody in the same party was the same or uh, we have some independent candidates within the who are on the party lists and they are you know free to vote how they want but you 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 know sort of expect them to do this so you check for them how they vote it but other guys you just you know you know they're gonna fall in line so if it's the same situation in Slovenia it might be you know too much effort and nothing to show uh, at the end, maybe yeah it makes sense right. yeah so I Okay. Yeah, Trishik, another question, but this time a question about uh, some of the other projects that you presented. Because uh, apart from Parliament, you've also presented how you came about during the time of uprising and some of the other things that you do, I think, is also interesting. So if you could just elaborate a bit more, how do you feel, and maybe the question would be in this, I'm sorry to bang on about this, but this is something that I'm really keen on exploring, uh, also as a grant maker in this sense of how to use this sort of type of online participatory tools to engage with activists or with general public. Uh, so, you know, what made you think that during the uprising, the, the type of things you did are the best way forward and what kind of contribution that can give to the type of uprising that was happening or in the future work you know, along those lines? Um, the idea was to find some kind of consensus, like the new social contract or something, uh, because uh, we really, I mean, I personally was disgusted by the fact that some people declare themselves as the voices of the movement and the stuff they said was sometimes not even... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like it, and even if I if I loved it, I, I still think it would be wrong. So uh, this is basically why we did it. But uh, if you want to hear about my grandiose master plan, um, how those things connect, the idea is to revive the the first project I show you someday. I mean, now it's abandoned. Where I don't even. If it's broken I, and I can't fix it anymore because it, I forgot what I did in that code. I mean, it was it's it's a mess. So we have to start uh, again and do it better. I, we learned stuff along the way, but uh, we wanted to come back to life again. And the idea is like if you have a carrot and a stick, then the parameter is the stick, and uh, the idea is to include. You have this parameter index, which uh, gives them a score of how well are they doing their job. And then basically stuff that would be voted on the, the, the first project I show you, which the, the participatory thing. Um, the, the way that MPs engage on that issues and the way that they uh, answer uh, questions posed by the citizens uh, on the issues that citizens brought up would be a part of this parameter index analysis. So if you wanted to lead on this chart, you had to respond to, to stuff people came up with on the project I showed you in the first place. This is like the loop, how it's supposed to connect, but whenever I talk about it, people think I'm crazy because it's... Uh, I mean, theoretically it works, I believe, but I'm not sure if we're, we'll ever pull this off. But now we'll, we'll launch, we'll launch Parlamenter. I mean, not now, we have like four months of work before this is done. We have the data parsed, um, the prototype is pretty much there, but now all the design work and then all the coding basically, so it's not there yet. But then I believe it will take like another year for us to find out what works and what's stupid. Like I really like this comment that probably everybody votes uh, aligned with other party members. So this is one analysis which is probably stupid and will be removed. And 
people will obviously use the tool uh, not the way I imagined they will be using it and maybe the media won't even care about it and I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll realize that developers are our primary uh, target audience maybe it will be the media, maybe, I don't know, so the idea is to do this kind of loop I told you about in two years or something when, when we'll figure out how this should work but I have this feeling, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's kind of uh, not a cool feeling to, to know that uh, this is laying there abandoned and that some people, I mean, there's still traffic, I mean, not much, but 200 people every day come and check that out and everything is broken and it doesn't work and it, it, it's haunting me. So we'll come back to that, but not now. Anyone else? Yeah? Just have a, a short comment, maybe following up on Peter's question to Marco uh, about your uh, hit and run tactics, <laughs> maybe putting it out there. Um, I, I think the projects you do are amazing and I understand the tactics, but uh, as an activist, focused on change, it's not actually something I can really relate to and I think uh, uh, Google Watch example is a, is a good example. Basically you have a database that's out there and now you have a new revival uh, about the database that was sort of forgotten for a while because of the new scientific research which was done by a young uh, scientist in Croatia and it was uh, spread throughout the media, he has some really interesting uh, findings but if I were in your shoes, I would actually try to put some effort in, uh, uh, you know, put some effort in uh, pushing people into actually uh, producing or using uh, these uh, tools. You know, Vukovic would have stayed in London for his PhD and not ever come back to Croatia and would, would not, there would not be this revival of uh, your uh, database. And actually, now uh, we have a new uh, agenda, the public uh, procurement is again on the public agenda and it's simply because Vuk Vukovic used uh, your database. So I imagine that if I were in your shoes I would uh, uh, not only be, uh, be focused on putting it out there but also trying to you know, make some collaborative networks or, or just uh, putting more effort in to actual NGOs or activists or scientists uh, using it. I know this is this is just you know different paradigms because I think that's what Peter's question came from. I imagine I'm not sure, but you know I just wanted to make a short comment. It's not a question, just a, you know an observation. I don't know if you wanna reply to it. But... Uh, I mentioned in the beginning that Windmill doesn't have any employees, doesn't have any property, doesn't rent space, doesn't do you know, any of those things. It's just a legal shell or a couple of people. So uh, we don't get paid to do these things. So I, I mean, I don't want to sound wrong, but I don't have the time for these things. So I have created a tool, I have show, shown that this is possible and I leave it to someone else who has more resources. I mean, any of our tools is available to anyone on this planet, either government or activists or people in another country. Some of our tools or ideas behind our tools have been used in other countries and I don't have any problem with that. So when, I, when we made something, it's free for all. So you do with it whatever uh, you want to do. So I understand the, the, the thing about uh, public procurement. I understand all the questions which were raised because we made a project and stopped. But the truth is we didn't stop. We made the project. We never planned to make it run. I really don't care about now, I have shown that, I have talked with the people in the Ministry of Economy that they should 
you know, redesign the website, they should uh, make all these data available. I mean, if, if I was in charge, and I'm not, obviously, very much obviously not, <laughs> uh, then all of this data and plenty of other data would be publicly available. You know, the, the website, uh, you know, the, there is this affair going on involving me uh, for like a couple of days, and the, the very problem you know, the, the starting point of that affair is a website uh, owned by the government, which I designed. You know, the transparency website designed by we, by me, is used to get me. Which, you know, <laughs> there is a some cosmic, you know, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say uh, justice, but you know, there there is a some karma is, is circling around. I, I don't, I have to figure it out, but. Uh, I want to move to other projects. I have some other people to offend, you know, <laughs> and I want to do that. So this is, you know, finished story. You know, I, 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 I'm doing this. I'm writing a blog. I'm creating group websites. I have created a number of projects. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that someone else will come and do a better thing. You know, I really do, and I want to meet that person, and I will help him. I mean, I really want to do other things, so that, that, that's it. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't even consider myself an activist, so... <laughs> that, that's it, that's sorry. Yeah. Um, before I give the word to Yadrka, I just want to ask, um, we didn't mention social media, it's, it's you know, far from this science, but still we all use it, and it, we all use it for our purposes. So I just want to encourage maybe Matiz to think about it, like how do you use it? Is it useful for the initiative for city council or uh, city assembly or not at all anymore? And maybe Gustav from Iceland, if you want to tell us how uh, in the Iceland movements, how the what kind of role is played by the social media, if at all, anymore. So yeah. No, uh, she said it, and I will try to do it. Uh, we um, um, activists in different groups, in uh, different uh, associations. Uh, more or less uh, cooperation, but uh, also in other. And I'm activist uh, in fourth group of uh, United uh, Left. Uh, the fourth group is not a party group. It's the fourth uh, one, a little bit eccentric, uh, <laughs> because the other three parties is classical party organized. Uh, we used uh, your um, um, uh, also in uh, protests, uh, also during all the protests, also later on uh, when it was, uh, uh, we organized some uh, debates, uh, public debates and so on, uh, and also during, I think, uh, uh, during the campaign uh, of uh, elections, so it was very useful and uh, what I see it will be very useful for the fourth group. I don't, I am not speaking about uh, parties now, I am speaking for, uh, for the fourth group and I think that it is not uh, in name of fourth group uh, but all, only uh, partly uh, till now we uh, think that it is useful some, something like that. Uh, the groups uh, which are connected with fourth group or and it is not only that uh, that groups which uh, are formally uh, in fourth group it is we um, work with uh, very different groups um, we have in the fourth group also uh, cousins Kovatba it is a group uh, who um, announces, not announces, what is to say. Kazan um, uh, is a group um, of uh, maybe legislations or st students of, uh, of uh, uh, law or something like that. Uh, we know only a few of them. We don't know uh, all the group completely because uh, they prefer that way. And they um, prepare um, uh, some 
I don't know. Um, it is not. A, it is not so um, big matter to know what they are doing uh, in the miniature, but the, all their work goes through uh, public channels or through uh, this media. Uh, so it means uh, we have no um, uh, feeling uh, for concrete persons, and they are covered completely. At least, at least three, four of them we know by names, uh, but not and not any one of them who concretely work and so on. So it means they are a little bit covered. Uh, with this uh, media, uh, we used also Facebook. Uh, it is normally uh, we published some things uh, from. For example, uh, Danes you know Dan. We used also Supervisor. It is a public media. And there you have some uh, very concrete databases uh, how many public uh, money was spent for different um, and you different, uh, um, I don't know, trades or something like that. But you should uh, have some added knowledge uh, to uh, interpret it. So it is very useful. Without uh, mass media, uh, we, sh we have a very big problem in our activity. Also now, schooling of uh, cooperation is going through or Skype or uh, this mass media, Facebook uh, pages. Uh, Normally, uh, normally the consulting is going uh, through Skype because it lowers prices and so on. It is very useful thing. That's it. Alright. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Um, I asked two of you, and then you will be the last one because we have to close. So yeah, um, in terms of social media, so I guess the context of the there was like hardly any use of social media. Um, it was mostly, it was like because from the start um, it was very clear where and when the protest was going to be. It was just like Saturday at 3 we're going to be there and that was just like the, that was that. And kind of, and just like the traditional media kind of, that was that. Um, there are protests now and they have been completely mobilized through Facebook. Um, and that's like I, I think um, uh, part of it, it's it's pretty crude basically. I mean, it's just like a, this kind of celebrity kind of like one singer who kind of wrote a, like an extended status that were kind of extended into an event on Facebook, and that's got just got shared. And I think uh, like a large uh, part of why this works in Iceland is like uh, I think like from 16 to 35 year olds, uh, there's like 97 percent that have Facebook. It's like a Everyone has internet, everyone has Facebook kind of thing, so it's easily kind of mobilized. But I mean, it's the same, it's always this risk, you know, you have the same situation with Facebook. You can have an event and you say, it's like, I'm attending on Facebook, and that kind of doesn't always mean attending. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, but so we were a bit surprised. We got like 6,500 people said they were going to attend the uh, uh, protest now last Monday. And then ended up being in the excess of about 5,000 people. It's like 80%, uh, something like 80, 85% of those who said they would be there so turned out. So it's kind of turning mm -hmm. out to be rather effective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have a few words. Okay, uh, yeah, about social media. Um, we apparently don't know how to use it. Uh, no, I mean this by observing the results of it, uh, like, I don't know if you go by the Facebook page for initiative uh, for City Assembly, we have like, uh, I don't know, 400 likes or something, but we have like a thousand people physically coming to the meetings, you know, so this is like totally inverse of any event on Facebook, you know, when there's like 500 people clicks going, you know, and then five people come. Uh, here we have the other way around. Also for like uh, uh, participatory budgeting initiative, we have like 700 likes, but we have 
4,000 physical uh, people come, you know, and in person sign uh, support lists. So apparently we have no idea how to use this uh, because it's totally contralogic uh, that it would work the other way around for us. But maybe one reason to explain this is that our activities uh, uh, may not be interesting for the age groups that actually use social media a lot because we see uh, at the city media, the assemblies that uh, it's usually older people who show up. It's not uh, uh, yeah, people like students are non-existent on these meetings. You know, maybe they come once and then they you know you do see oh it's not revolution. You know, we're just talking about uh, matters in our environment. So yeah, they never come out come again. Um, so yeah, when you want to see the, uh, if we, you know, see a cross section of the people that constantly show up, it's like 40 plus age group, and the most common is like 50 plus. Yeah. So uh, I guess those are not on the media, <laughs> on the social media. There are not a lot of Twitters or Facebookers on there. Uh, so it has limited value for us, uh, but uh, you know maybe we're just doing it wrong. You know maybe someone can take a look at it and explain it to us. So uh, oh yeah, well paid advertisements actually had greater uh, greater returns. Yeah, but just putting it out and hoping people would like and it would spread uh, doesn't seem to to get much done. <laughs> thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank both of the speakers. I really enjoyed the presentation. And uh, first, just one comment. Uh, now, I guess everybody heard about the Boston bombing that happened a year or two years ago. And now, a lot of people don't know, but uh, the first people who identified who was the Boston bomber were the online users uh, on the infamous uh, website Fortune, the birthplace of the group Anonymous, they posted the videos from the bomb. Tons and tons and tons of data. Now, you have maybe 5,000 FBI agents with their computers working on it, but Fortune had millions of people working on it. So they got, uh, to the, they identified the person and identified it on the photos and the videos before the official agencies did. Now, that is something fascinating when you think about it. Now, of course, it is interesting. You're searching for the bomb. Something as that your, you know, your typical bureaucrat stealing money is not gonna be so popular that millions of people will go hunt down. But I completely understand this idea of I'm developing a tool and then I'm not trying to make it popular. But I think it is our our responsibility as, as people who are either in media, either in groups, to make it specifically popular. So for example, some of the things here are incredible. 14 million views. On, on, on the registry of, of, of the war veterans, right? Now, uh, my basic question is, with 40 million views, what were the results? Were there any real results from those 40 millions? So, is it really popularity enough, or there is a next step we have to do when we have this kind of tools? Thanks. Can I add my little footnote, because there was a question? Sorry. Is it no. Okay, 30 seconds. Ten, se ten seconds, because it, it does seem to me that's absolutely right, because war veterans are protected and users of social welfare are not protected in Croatia, and therefore, you know, you don't have that responsibility, but I think we have to think about why it is that, despite certain transparency, some benefits still get left in. And frankly, I don't trust the investigators who are trying to save money, who are, who are attacking users of welfare because of some mistake. So we'll just final responses from you, and then we close. Uh, it's okay. I, what do you want to say before? It's a bit off topic right now. I just wanted to say that uh, we, I mean, regarding the mass media, uh, we've been ignored uh, quite badly. Um, on the when the uprising was happening, uh, they were uh, they they saw what we did, and I hadn't interview on Wald Westodwa the very next morning when it was published. Uh, I was uh, there for half an hour and then the next day we got an email from Pop TV. Uh, they wanted to do an interview with me, not with, I mean, 
we totally uh, hated the fact that they're trying to pick up a face and uh, make their, I don't know, create a hero or something, and we didn't want to play their game. So Philip went, and next day Nika, and then Eva, and Asmina, and we, we just circulated, and when uh, the sixth media approached us, we asked another friend who knew enough, <laughs> we briefed him for one hour and told him, now you go. So we played this game, we never wanted to appear twice in the media, and they thought it was fun for about one month, and they, then, they, then they thought that we were making fun of them, and that they didn't want to invite us again. And maybe we, we screwed up, I mean, it would have been better to to, I mean, more tr more people would use our websites and more good stuff would happen if we played that game. But this is something we decided and I'm not sure if it was very smart, but I just wanted to add that because of, you mentioned the uh, mass media and we can't really play very well with them. Maybe those invaluable cards will make them think that we're not their enemies. So, uh, let's start with a little simple thing the voters list. I believe that, you know, uh, the, the problem was well known when uh, we launched the site, but, and there is a saying, you don't blame a single drop to, uh, for the flood, but mine was the last, so I'm sure of it. So after that, everything <laughs> broke down. Uh, and the government made a lot of changes in uh, the way you uh, report your uh, place of residence, the way the waters list are handled and so on. So, really significant thing changed in that regard. As far as the war veteran goes, uh, first of all, we have an official website for uh, with the war veteran list, which is, I mean, it appears to be identical in function like uh, the one I showed you. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, not much happened. I mean, that, 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 that's true, but I believe that people are aware of what's going on with the war veterans, and I also believe that eventually this thing will have to be cleared up. I have an internal issue with things which happened in the past and haven't been cleared up in time. You know, I, I strongly believe as a person that just because we didn't clear up what happened after the World War II in, in, in our countries, we are still talking about it. Just because we didn't clear up what happened in the 90s, we are still talking about it, we are burdened about it, and our future is uh, par at least partially hostage of, of our uh, indecision to resolve this issue. You know, so we are deeply uh, you know, divided because of it, and it has to be solved. You know, on with with any cost, because it's better to pay a high cost now than to pay installments plus interest plus everything else. You know, in the long run. So, but that just me. Okay, we'll close here. Thank you, everybody, uh, for the discussion. Lunch.